Greetings, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries, in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This Bible study is going to be on Take Heed, H-E-E-D. Now, according to Webster's 1828 Dictionary of the American English Language, to heed means to observe. Oh, let's take a look. It means to mind, to regard with care, to take notice of, to attend to, to observe. In other words, pay attention, people. So, we're going to do the Old Testament first. Now, we're only going to do the parts where the Lord tells us to take heed. We're not going to listen to the parts where men tell us to take heed. Turn your Bible to the book of Exodus, chapter 19, verse 1. In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, now this is after Israel was released from the bondage of Pharaoh by the Lord, the first Passover. So, in the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. For they were departed from Rephidim, Rephidim, I guess, and were come to the desert of Sinai, and had pitched in the wilderness. And there Israel camped before the mount. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him from out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel. Now Jacob's name was changed to Israel. A lot of people don't know it, but there were twelve tribes of Israel, and the tribe of Levi was the tribe of the priests. They were the ones that were to serve the Lord. Moses and Aaron were Levites. They were of the priest tribe. God gave the law to the priest tribe, to Moses. Christ was of the tribe of Judah. Judah was to be the tribe of the kings. So the king was the civil authority, just like the president or the king, uh, if you you're from the UK. And the Levites were the ecclesiastical or religious leaders. So the kings were responsible for punishing criminals, whereas the Levitical tribe, the Levites, were responsible for leading the people in their relationship and worship of the Lord God. So, and the Lord called out unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Now, I did an entire study on eagles' wings. Verse 5. Now, therefore, if, big if, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant. Now, there's two types of covenants. There's an unconditional covenant, and then there's a conditional covenant. Um, let's say your parents say, you know, if you finish high school, uh, we'll pay for you to go to college if you want to. Or I'll buy you a car, you know. So that's the deal. You got to graduate from high school, then you get the car or go to college, whichever, right? That's a conditional covenant. You do this, I will do that. An unconditional covenant is, uh, I'm going to buy you a cake for your birthday. Bingo. All you got to do, you know, you don't do anything except for live and make it to your birthday. That's an unconditional covenant. I'm going to do this regardless of what you do. Now, therefore, 
if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. All right, let's take a look at verse 6. So we're talking about a peculiar people, verse 6. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words that, that which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Now, where do we get, to, do we hear some language similar to this in the New Testament? Yeah. First Peter chapter 2, uh, verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous not light which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. And people will tell you, oh, that's because you're not, we, we're not Jews, we're, we're not Israel. Well, that's not necessarily true. Take a look at Jeremiah verse chapter 3 and verse all right, let's go to Jeremiah chapter 3. I guess we're going to start verse 6. The Lord said also unto me in the days of Josiah the king. Now, Josiah was a good king. Matter of fact, he, uh, he got rid of the Sodomites out of the land. He hated them so bad, he even destroyed the houses they lived in. I guess that was... Because they were spiritually defiled, I don't know. But he got rid of them. The Lord said also unto me in the days of Josiah the king, Hast thou seen that which backsliding Israel hath done? She has gone up upon every high mountain and under every green tree, and there played the harlot. She was a whore, a spiritual whore. Why the high mountains and why the green trees? That has to do with witchcraft. Uh, they would go up into the mountains to worship the devil and trees. Uh, witches go, during their little ceremonies, they go into the forest and they worship the trees. Uh, a lot of people don't know it, but uh, from what I've, my research, is the holly tree was used for making what they call their magic wands. You know, they don't call it Hollywood for nothing. And uh, oaks were, they call them sacred oaks, you know. So here it is. They were going up on the high mountains and worshiping under the green trees. And played the spiritual whore, verse 7. And I said, after she had done all these things, turn thou unto me. See, God loved Israel and he wanted her. Come back to me. Don't be running off worshiping the devil. Come to me. I love you. Turn thou unto me, but she returned not. And her treacherous sister uh, Judah saw it. See, Israel and Judah split. Sort of like uh, the North and the South during the American Civil War. Verse 8. And I saw when, when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery... I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. You see, God made an unconditional covenant with King David that there would always be a man upon the throne. And David was of the tribe of Judah. And Christ also, right? So, God divorced Israel, but he didn't divorce Judah, probably because of that specific promise. Uh, 
uh, verse 9. And it came to pass through the lightness of her whoredom, talking about Judah, that she defiled the land and committed adultery with stones and with stocks. Stones, you know, they carved idols. They made gods with their hands, right? And yet for all this, her treacherous sister Judah hath not turned unto me with her whole heart, but feignedly saith the Lord. And the Lord said unto me, The backsliding Israel hath justified herself more than treacherous Judah. See, God divorced Israel because she was bad, but Judah was even worse. Verse 12, go and proclaim these words toward the north, and that's where Israel was the north, and say, return thou backsliding Israel, saith the Lord, and I will not cause mine anger to fall upon you, for I am merciful, saith the Lord, and will not keep anger forever. Good thing for me, people, because if God wasn't merciful, I'd have been dead a long time ago. Verse 13, only acknowledge thine iniquity, that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God, and hast scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree, and ye have not obeyed my voice, saith the Lord. Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you. Isn't Christ going to come back and marry his bride, the church, one day? Why? Because he divorced her in, in verse 8. He divorced Israel. Turn, O backsliding ch children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. And I will give you pastors, ministers, not, not sheep pastures, pastors, like a minister, like a, yeah. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. And it shall come to pass when ye be multiplied and increased in the land in those days, saith the Lord. They shall say no more, the ark of the covenant, neither shall it come to mind, neither shall they remember it, neither shall they visit it, neither shall that be done any more. At that time they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord, and all the nations shall be gathered under it. To the name of the Lord to Jerusalem, neither shall they walk any more after the imagination of their evil heart. In, in those days, the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel. You see, they're not the same. And they shall come together out of the land of the north, to the land which I have given for an inheritance under unto your fathers. What land is north of Israel? Europe, people. The land of the north. Now, in the book of Hosea, chapter 1 and verse 1. Now, those of you that have listened to me regularly, yeah, you, I've covered this a few times, but... You know, it never hurts to hear it again. Matter of fact, I love I love reading this. It's it's a love story. The Bible's a love story. People don't get that. You know, they think they think it's a bunch of uh, rules of do's and don'ts and no, it's a love story. It really is. And Israel's the object of God's love. All right, Hosea chapter 1, verse 1. The word of the Lord that came into Hosea, the son of Beri, in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel. The beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea, and the Lord said, uh, 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 said to Hosea, Go, take thee a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms. See, God's telling Hosea, go get you a, a whore for a wife, and you're going to have children that are whore, uh, whoredoms. For the land hath committed great whoredom, departing from the Lord. See, this is kind of a parallel to the Lord when he married Israel. Israel was a whore to, against the Lord. 
So basically, this is kind of a parallel. Verse 3. So he went and took Gomer, not Gomer, Pyle. So he went and took Gomer, the daughter of Diblaim, which conceived and bare him a son. And the Lord said unto him, Call his name Jezreel, for yet a little while, and I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Jehu, and will cause to cease the kingdom of the house of Israel. See, God was going to have Israel carried away by the Assyrian Empire for their wickedness. He'd had enough. He'd had a belly full. Verse 5. And it will come to pass at that day that I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. Well, what's the breaking of the bow? Well, you know, if you got a bow and arrows and you're in a battle and your bow's broken, you can't shoot any arrows. You're defenseless. That I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. And she conceived again and bare a daughter. And God said unto her, Call her name Lo Ruhama, for I will no more, for I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away. And that's what and that's what Assyria did. Assyria came in, took them, and took the people out of the land, carried them to another place, and made them slaves. The Assyrians were horrible people. They were horrible. They would take fish hooks. And, and put it through their mouth, uh, the slaves' mouths and through their noses and parade them through the city. Look what we caught, you know. For I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away. But I will have mercy upon the house of Judah. And will save them by the Lord their God, and will not save them by bow, nor by sword, nor by battle, by horses, nor by ho horsemen. Now when she had weaned, we now when she had weaned Lo Ruhama, she conceived and bare a son. Then said God, Call his name Lo Am I, for ye are not my people. For ye are not my people, and I will not be your God. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea. And funny how lying church preachers will tell you that a couple of million Jews are the fulfillment of all these Bible prophecies. Oh yeah, the antichrist that deny Jesus, that hate Jesus, that don't keep God's laws. Well, those are God's chosen people. And the Christians that do love Jesus, that do try to keep God's laws. Oh, we're just a bunch of Gentiles grafted into this Jewish antichrist tree. I don't think so. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. That's funny. I can, I can number the number of Jews between 12 and 18 million in the whole world. But the Bible says they couldn't be numbered. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people. And where was this? Jerusalem. In Jerusalem. That in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people. There it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living God. See, God divorced them, but he's telling them here, There it shall be said Unto them ye are the sons of the living God. How? Faith in Christ. Then shall the children of Jews, Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together and uh, point themselves one head. Who's that head? Christ. And they shall come up out of the land, for great shall be the day of Jezreel. Uh, let's see. How about Hosea chapter 2? 
verse 21. Hosea 2, 21. And it shall come to pass in that day, I will hear, saith the Lord, I will hear the heavens, and they shall hear the earth. And the earth shall hear the corn and the wine and the oil, and they shall hear Jezreel. And I will sow her unto me in the earth, and I will have mercy upon her, hers, who's her? Israel. And I will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy. And I will say to them which were not my people, who was not his people? Israel. Jeremiah 3 8. He divorced them. And I will say to them which were not my people, Thou art my people, and they shall say, Thou art my God. Yeah, people, they want us to think that we're a bunch of non-Israelites grafted into this Jewish tree. Where can this... Now, that was Old Testament. Where can we find these same exact words in the New Testament? Well, how about Romans chapter 9? Well, matter of fact, let's, uh, I'm not sure where I'm going to start. Let me take a look. Oh, let's 921. Hath not the potter power over the clay? Of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy that's Israel which he had afore prepared unto glory even us whom he hath called not of the Jews only but also of the Gentiles as he saith also in O.C. And this is the Greek rendering of Hosea. As he saith also in Osi, I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not beloved. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. Isaiah also crieth concerning Israel. And that's the uh, rendering of uh, Isaiah. Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will the Lord make upon Israel the earth. And as Isaiah said before, except the Lord of Sabaoth have left us a seed, and we had been as Sodoma, Sodom, and been made like unto Gomorrah, what shall we say then? That the Gentiles, which followed not after righteousness, have obtained to righteousness even the righteousness which is of faith. What faith? The faith in Christ. But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, hath not obtained to the law of righteousness. Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law, for they stumbled at that stumbling stone. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Sion a stumbling stone and rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him should not be ashamed. And what's this corner, the stumbling stone, rock of offense? Well, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 gives you the answer. Moreover, brethren, verse 1, Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant. What is ignorant? It means you don't know something. You know, when you go into first grade, you're ignorant on probably advanced mathematics. Doesn't mean you're stupid, just means you don't know something. 
you haven't been taught yet. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat that uh, the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ, not Peter. Catholics that got it wrong, not Peter, and that rock was Christ. Let's go back to Exodus chapter 19. Oh, uh, let's see. Verse 5, I guess. Now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord hath spoken we will do. Liars! Liars! All that the Lord hath spoken, we will do. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with thee, and believe thee forever. And Moses told the words of the people unto, uh, unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people, and sanctify them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their clothes. You know, it's kind of a, washing the clothes was kind of symbolic for cleaning off the filth of this world, preparing yourself spiritually, you know. Uh, verse 11, and be ready against the third day. Now think about it. When did Christ, Christ, Christ was crucified and on the third day he was, he rose from the dead, right? And be ready against the third day, for the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. And thou shalt set bounds unto the people round about. Bounds. You ever heard of a boundary? It's like, put up a fence. Don't let, you know, that's what they're doing. They're setting up a boundary. Don't go beyond the boundary. And thou shalt set bounds unto the people round about, saying, Take heed. Pay attention, observe, be careful, okay? Take heed to yourselves that ye go not up into the mount or touch the border of it. Whosoever toucheth the mount shall, sh be, sh shall be surely put to death. You don't want the unholy touching the holy, and that's what we are. We're unholy vessels before faith in Christ. God did not, did not want these people going up to the mountain where he was. Verse 13. There shall not an hand touch it, but he shall surely be stoned or shot through. Whether it be beast or man, it shall not live. When the trumpet soundeth long, they shall come up to the mount. Okay. Uh, you can read, you can continue reading this on your own, but I think, um, we made the point. All right. All right. Let's go to Exodus chapter 34. We're going to start verse one. Um, God had given Moses the 10 commandments and he came down from the mountains and saw Aaron and all the people dancing around the golden calf. And he threw down the tablets of stone with the Ten Commandments and broke them. You know, in that day, Moses broke all ten of the commandments. He broke them all. Think about that. Verse 1. And the Lord said unto Moses, Hew thee two ta tables of stone like unto the first, and I will write upon these tables the words that were in the first tables which thou breakest. And be and be ready in the morning and come up 
in the morning unto Mount Sinai and present thyself there to me in the top of the mount. And no man, and no man shall come up with thee. Neither let any man be seen throughout all the mount. Neither let the flocks nor herds feed before that, that mount. And he hewed two tables of stone like unto the first. And Moses rose up early in the morning and went unto Mount Sinai as the Lord had commanded him and took in his hand the two tables of stone. And the Lord descended in the cloud. Remember when we read in um, about how they uh, the cloud and passed through the sea and that rock was Christ? Well, that's what they're talking about here. God was a cloud during the day and a pillar of fire by night. He led them out of Egypt. And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and to the fourth generation. Have you ever heard of generational curses? Well, maybe this is where they get it from. So, and let's face it, people. Uh, sadly, if a woman is a whore, or if the husband's a whore, and the wife gets pregnant, and she has a venereal disease, uh, oftentimes it's passed on to the children. Because, well, that's how it works. That's why back in the old days, they would take silver drops and put it in the eyes of children to keep them from catching, I believe it was syphilis. I've heard they don't do this anymore. I, I don't know. Used to be, uh, to get a marriage license, you had to go get a blood test to make sure you didn't have any diseases. I don't think they do that anymore either. Well, at least not here in Florida where I still am. So, verse 8. And Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth and worshipped. And he said, If now I have found grace in thy sight. Oh yeah, see there's grace in the Old Testament. People will tell you, Oh no, there's no grace in the Old Testament. Now, there's grace in the Old Testament. Not, not like in the New, but there was. Uh, matter of fact, Moses, uh, Noah found grace in the eyes of God. And that was Genesis 6. And he said, If now I have found grace in thy sight, O Lord, let my Lord, I pray thee, go among us, for it is a stiff-necked people. And pardon, pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us for thine inheritance. And he said, Behold, I make a covenant before all the people. I will do marvels such as have not been done in all the earth, nor in any nation, and all the people among which thou art shall see the work of the Lord, for it is a terrible thing that I will do with thee. Listen carefully. Observe thou that which I command thee this day. Behold, I drive out before thee the Amorite, and the Canaanite, and the Hittite, and the Perizzite, the Parasite, the Perizzite, and the Hivite, and the Jebusite. People, let me tell you something. If you don't believe that these people were satanic seed line, serpent seed line, some would say, from Genesis 6, the Canaanites... And not all the Canaanites were giants. Not all of them. But some of them were. I mean, face it. David faced Goliath. The Philistines. They were giants. But they were part of the Canaanite tribes. And people will deny this and deny this and deny this. 
now on YouTube and I have a playlist and I also have a playlist on Bright Eon on the Sons of God and the Angels that Sinned. And if you can listen to the 10 or 12 or 15 hours of studies that I did and still not believe that these people were from the fallen angels in Genesis 6, I don't know what to tell you. You, 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 can, you can offer salvation to the Goliath and the Canaanites all you want. But God said, don't marry them. Don't make uh, covenants with them. Don't make any agreements with them. You don't want nothing to do with these people. Matter of fact, I want you to go in the land and I want you to kill them all. Kill them all. Now, don't send evangelists. Don't teach them the ways of the Lord. Don't teach them the Ten Commandments. Kill them. I exterminate everything that breathes. I mean, you know, come on, people. I mean, you know, it just... These, these people that tell you this stuff either don't know their Bible or they work for the devil. I don't know what to tell you. Verse 11. Observe thou that which I command thee this day. Behold, I drive out before thee the Amorite and the Canaanite and the Hittite and the Perizzite and the Hivite and the Jebusite. Take heed, take heed to thyself, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, whither thou goest, lest it be for a snare in the midst of thee. Do you know what a snare is? It's a trap. You can make a snare. It uh, looks like a noose. You can make it out of twine or rope or wire. It's like a noose. It's got a loop, and it it it'll get the loop can get big or small. And when an animal, when you're trying to snare an animal, the animal runs through, gets its head in the, the, the snare, and the loop tightens around its throat, and it chokes to death. Or it's caught, and it can't drink water, and then it dies of thirst. Well, remember Jesus with the woman at the well? He mentioned the well of living water. Well, if you get the snare, you're not going to get living water because that's what these people were they were traps they were satanic hybrids from the fallen angels intermarrying with the women and israel did not drive them out israel intermarried with them they made covenants with them a, a contracts and agreements with them they worshiped their gods Take heed to thyself, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, the Canaan, the land of Canaan, the Canaanites, whither thou goest, lest it be for a snare in the midst of thee. Listen carefully. But ye shall destroy their altars, break their images, and cut down their groves. Remember, under every green tree they worshipped? Yeah. See, God doesn't want to play around with Satanists. He doesn't want us playing around with Satanists. He wants us to destroy their altars, break their images, and cut down their groves. Verse 14. For thou shalt worship no other God, for the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. See, God's married to Israel. It's, it's going to be his bride. And he's jealous. Just like a man should, if a man really loves his wife, He's going to be jealous over her. I mean, hopefully not an unhealthy jealousy, but, you know. Uh, listen carefully. Verse 15. Lest thou make a covenant, that's in a contract, an agreement. Lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and they go a whoring after their gods, and do sacrifice unto their gods, which are devil's people. And do sacrifice unto their gods, and one call thee, and thou eat of his sacrifice. And thou take of their daughters unto thy sons, and their daughters go a-whoring after their gods, and make thy sons go a-whoring after their gods. Thou shalt make thee no molten gods. Don't make idols, people. 
You're, you are not to let your da their daughters marry your sons, and you are not to let your sons marry their daughters. Think about it, people. Think about it. God hated Israel doing mixed marriages. Hated it. And I'm not saying necessarily who they are. Jesus said, by their fruits, ye shall know them. That's why he wanted believers marrying believers. And I'm a hypocrite. I admit it. All right, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 4. I guess we're going to read the whole chapter, and then I'll make this part 1, maybe. Deuteronomy 4, verse 1. Now therefore hearken. In other words, listen, people. Now therefore hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you, for to do them, that ye may live, and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. See, the Canaanites were already in the land. The satanic children of the devils was already in the land going to oppose the Lord and his children. And trust me, it's going to be the same thing in the end uh, when the Lord Jesus finally returns in glory in the clouds. The children of the devils is going to already be in the land ready to oppose him. Verse 2. Nothing new under the sun. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did, un, uh, did because of Baal Peor. Uh, Baal was just, uh, it, it's a generic name for Lord, and it was so associated with Satanism that, God said, don't call me Baal anymore. And Baal Peor was just another satanic god. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did because of Baal Peor. For all the men that follow Baal Peor, the Lord thy God hath destroyed them from among you. But ye, did, but ye that did cleave unto the Lord, your God, are alive, every one of you this day. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that ye should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom. Ah, God's statutes and judgments. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. See, God had a, a set of rules for a government. There were the blood sacrifice laws. Those were done away with when Christ was on the cross. And then there was the, um, the governmental laws how God wanted the king, like murderers were to be put to death. But you weren't to put people to death unless you had two or three witnesses. And let me tell you, perjury was a very, very serious thing in the Bible. Because if you lied, if you and uh, another person said, I saw so-and-so kill somebody, and you testified against them to have them put to death, and they found out you were lying, you were executed with the same judgment. Let me tell you, people, perjury nowadays means nothing. Nobody goes to jail for perjury unless it affects a politician. You know, you try to get a politician in trouble or, or that's popular or in power. Uh, you know, women routinely perjure themselves in divorce court. Nothing ever happens to them. And I, that's not just a knock against women, because the men do it too, you know. I mean, uh, it's just the way it is. But in the Bible, oh boy, I tell you what, you committed perjury in the Bible. Whatever the penalty was, applied to you. And if you knew that if you lied, you were going to lose your life, you would think twice, maybe three times, before you lied. So... 
Um, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what nation is there so great who hath God so nigh unto thee, I'm sorry, unto them, as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for? And what nation is there so great that hath statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day? Only take heed, only take heed to yourselves and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life, but teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. See, God wanted us to teach not only our children, but our grandchildren. And, and, and what happened in America? In 1963, 1964, the, a bunch of men in black skirts that they call robes, that dare to call themselves the Supreme Court, took Bible reading and prayer out of public schools, where it had been for over 200 and something years. They took God's laws and prayer and the words of Jesus out of schools, where God said, but teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. Verse 10. Especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in Horeb, when the Lord said unto me, Gather me the people together, and I will make them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth, and that they may teach their children. And ye came near and stood under the mountain, and the mountain burned with fire under the midst of heaven with darkness, clouds, and thick darkness. And the Lord spake unto you out of the midst of the fire. Ye heard the voice of the words, but saw no similitude, only ye heard a voice. And he declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, even ten commandments. And he wrote them upon two tables of stone. Why two tables of stone? You see, basically half the commandments dealt with your treatment of the Lord, how you should honor and respect the Lord, and the other, how to treat your fellow man. And isn't that what Jesus said? The two commandments, love the Lord, love thy neighbor, on these two hang all the law and the prophets. Think about it. Why two tables of stone? Love the Lord, love thy neighbor. If you love the Lord, you're not going to worship idols. If you love your neighbor, you're not going to steal from him. You're not going to kill him. You know, it's real simple. It makes so much sense. At least it does to me. Verse 14. And the Lord commanded me at that time to teach you statutes and judgments that ye might do them in the land, whither ye go over to possess it. Take ye therefore good heed, good heed unto yourself, for ye saw no matter of similitude on the day that the Lord spake unto you in Horeb out of the midst of the fire, lest ye corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image, an idol. And that's what's going to happen in the, um, in the book of Revelation. The beast, there's going to be an image of the beast, an idol, a graven image, people. You know, Nothing new under the sun, Solomon said. And if you want to know Satan's plan for the future, look to the past. Nothing really changes. It's just God's going to give Satan a longer leash. That's all. Lest ye corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image, the similitude of any figure, the likeness of male or female, the likeness of any beast that is on the earth, the likeness of any winged fowl that flieth in the air, the likeness of anything that creepeth on the ground, the likeness of any fish that is in the waters beneath the earth. This is why I don't like images in churches. You know, it says don't do this. Don't make any figures. You know, don't make something and call it the Virgin Mary or, or call it Jesus. You know, no. Verse 19 uh, or 18. The likeness of anything that creepeth on the ground, the likeness of any fish that is in the waters beneath the earth. 
unless thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun and the moon and the stars, even all the host of heaven, shouldest be driven to worship them and serve them, which the Lord thy God hath divided unto all nations unto the whole heaven. But the Lord hath taken you and brought you forth out of the iron furnace. One of these days I'm going to com hope to complete the Iron Kingdom series. Ah, uh, you know, you know who first did the Kingdom of? I mean, uh, who first worked with iron? The children of Cain. Think about that if you catch my drift. And brought you forth out of the iron furnace, even out of Egypt, to be unto him a people of inheritance, as ye are this day. Furthermore, the Lord was angry with me for your sakes, and swear that I should not go over Jordan, and that I should not go in unto that good land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. But I must die in this land, I must not go over Jordan, but ye shall go over and possess that good land. Take heed, take heed unto yourselves, lest ye forget the covenant, lest ye forget the covenant of the Lord your God, which he made with you, and make you a graven image or the likeness of anything which the Lord thy God hath forbidden thee. For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire. Wow. For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. Where did we read about that? So, is God a consuming fire? How about in Genesis 19.24? Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. How about 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 7? But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Verse 12. Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. All right, let's go back to Deuteronomy 4, verse 24. For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. When thou shalt begat children and children's children, and ye shall have remained long in the land, and shall corrupt yourselves, and shall corrupt yourselves, and make a graven image or the likeness of anything, and shall do evil in the sight of the Lord thy God to provoke him to anger, I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day, and ye shall soon utterly perish, that ye shall soon utterly perish from off the land, whereunto ye go over Jordan to possess it. And ye shall not prolong your days up, uh, upon it, but ye shall utterly be destroyed. Isn't that what's happening to the white Christian nations, former white Christian nations? But ye shall utterly be destroyed, and the Lord shall scatter you among the nations, and ye shall be left few in number among the heathen, whither the Lord shall lead you. And there ye shall serve gods, the work of men's hands, wood and stone, which neither see, nor hear, nor eat, nor smell. But if thou from thence, but listen, but if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him. If thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. You know, when you love the Lord and look for him more than anything else in this world, he's not going to be hidden from you. You'll find him. He'll find you. But if you think you're going to play little plastic Jesus on the dashboard of your car, games with him, Ain't going to work, people. Uh-uh. Ain't going to work. If thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul, when thou art in tribulation. What's tribulation? Trouble. That's what we're in now, people. And it's only getting started. This is the introduction. 
when thou art in tribulation and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days. What's the latter days? The end times, people. Even in the latter days. This is the Old Testament. This is the books of Moses. And it's talking about the latter days, the end times. Even in the latter days, if thou turn to the Lord thy God and shall be obedient unto his voice. For the Lord thy God is a merciful God. He will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which ye swear unto them. For ask now of the days that are past, which were before thee since the day that God created man upon the earth, and ask from the one side of heaven unto the other, whither there hath been any such thing as this, uh, as this great thing is, or hath been heard like it. Did, did ever people hear the voice of God speaking out of the midst of the fire as thou hast heard and lived? Or hath God assuaged to go and take him a nation from the midst of another nation by temptations, by signs, and by wonders, and by war, and by a mighty hand, and by a stretched out arm, and by great terrors, according to all that the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your eyes. Unto thee it was showed that thou mightest know that the Lord, he is God, there is none else beside him. Out of heaven he made thee to hear his voice, that he might instruct thee, and upon earth he showed thee his great fire. He has showed thee his great fire, and thou heardest his words out of the midst of the fire. And because he loved thy fathers, therefore he chose their seed after them and brought thee out in his sight with his mighty power out of Egypt to drive out nations, to drive out nations from before thee, greater, greater and mightier than thou art, to bring thee in, to give thee their land for an inheritance as it is this day. Know therefore this day and consider it in thine heart that the Lord, he is God, in heaven above and upon the earth beneath, there is none else. Thou shalt keep therefore his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee this day, that it may go well with thee and with thy children after thee, that, that and that thou mayest, mayest prolong thy days upon the earth, which the Lord thy God giveth thee forever. Wow. Wow. Think about that, people. All right, I think I'm going to cut out right here. And we're going to turn this into part one of Take Heed. Uh, boy, this is going to be a big study. So it looks like. All right, well, I'll... Oh, and keep in mind, people, when, I, uh, if you, when uh, the day tube deletes me, Look for me on Bright Eon, B R I G H T E O N dot com. Uh, when you go there, just search uh, Chaplain Bob Walker or Christian Bible Studies. That's the name of the channel, and uh, you'll find you'll find me. So, all right, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. And that's Jesus, who is the Christ, in His precious name, Amen.